Hello fellow friends and book lovers. Today I am coming to you with a non-spoiler book chat slash review on The Family Upstairs written by Lisa Jewell. I'm going to leave it here for you a little bit so you can admire its cover. And towards the end, I'm going to put the time here. For those who have read the book, I am going to do a little bit of a book chat. So if you've read, I would love to hear what you thought about it. And I'll let you know when the spoilers come. But for now, I would just like to give you my review on the book and what I thought about it and what I rated it and tell you a little bit about it. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So The Family Upstairs is an adult fiction story. I would consider it a psychological thriller, but some may just consider it a thriller. However, most of the books I do read are adult thrillers, but I do love me a good psychological th thriller. And I would put that under this category for sure. I did listen to this book on Amazon Audible as one of my monthly credits, hence why I put the cover here and I'm not holding a physical copy. The book does go through quite a few point of views, so I just wanna talk about those a little bit and our main characters and the gist of the story. So I do find that this book has a very large family dynamic component. And what I mean by that is the entire story is interwoven with our three main characters that we follow, which are Libby, Lucy, and Henry. And I didn't find it hard to follow on Audible. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start there. It wasn't hard to follow. However, at first I was like, Libby and Lucy, which one's which? But you just, you get the hang of it when you start listening to it for a little bit. So as we start with the book, we follow a character named Libby who we find out she's adopted and she inherits this million dollar home um, somewhere in London. I did not write down the specifics in my notes while I was listening, but what I do know is it was a really nice part of London and it was worth a lot of money. And she's a young 20 something who, I mean, despite your age, inheriting a million dollar house, multi-million dollar house would probably be exciting. So she was really excited. She just worked an average job and she finds out that she inherits this house from her deceased birth parents and she gets really excited naturally. So there's this air and mystery of this house that Libby inherits. She doesn't know a lot about her real parents at all. She doesn't know anything about the house and she's just craving information. So you feel for her a little bit in the story because she inherits this house. She doesn't know anything about her family and she just wants to find out more information. And for me personally, with this little mystery kind of tied to um, her parents' death and is she gonna explore the house? Is the house gonna have any clues? Is she gonna find out more about her family? I just loved that whole part of the story and it really hooked me from the very beginning because it's like the first chapter that you're finding all of this out and it's really super exciting. Before we get into the non-spoiler book review and then the spoiler book chat, um, for those who have read, I do wanna tell you what I rated the book. So on Goodreads, which if you have a Goodreads and we're not friends there yet, I'm gonna put my link to my Goodreads in the description below. But I did give it a five out of five on Goodreads. I do think it's a really good thriller. And like I said a little earlier, I do think it would be considered a psychological thriller for me a little bit, a little, like not mainly, it's not anywhere near um, the silent patient kind of, kind of feel, but I feel there is a massive psychological component with this book, hence why it falls in that category for me. And for my personal rating, I do like to rate books out of 10. I don't know if it's a teacher in me, but it's just easier for me to rate a book that way. And I would give this a nine out of 10. The reason that it isn't a 10 out of 10 is because I did feel a little, and I mean a little, little, little deflated with the ending. Um, I can't really say a whole lot about that. The ending is good, but I did feel a little deflated. So for those who have read and you're gonna wait for the book chat in a little bit, um, I'll tell you why, but it is a really good read and I really recommend it for those who haven't read yet. 
So we're introduced to the Libby character and we're following her along her journey of figuring out about her family. She does get to explore this new mysterious home that is technically hers, which is fun. And along the story, we are following a character named Lucy and Henry. I don't want to say a whole lot about them. However, Henry has a very creepy vibe to him. His point of view is told from his childhood and there are just a lot of parts of the story where you feel really sorry for him, but you're also thinking in your head, well, you have a lot of issues. Lucy, on the other part, mm, we follow her story with her two children and we figure out a little bit about her past and how all three of these characters um, are interwoven. It is a really great story. I 10 out of 10 recommend. And if you have read the book, I am going to start my book chat now, which is where I talk all about what I thought of the book, different parts of the book. So going forward in this review, it is only going to be for people who have read the story or don't really have an interest in reading it and just want to hear what I thought about the book. But going forward, it is going to contain spoilers. I did feel like a little bit of this book was predictable. I felt like as I was hearing some of the instances that were going on with the characters, I was easily able to guess what was coming next. That necessarily doesn't bother me, but I know that is a pretty big pet peeve for um, a lot of you guys. So I did wanna say I felt that a little bit in the story. However, it didn't frustrate me as much as I feel like it frustrated others, if that makes sense. So can we just go ahead and talk about how terrible of a character Michael is? I, when I was listening to the parts with Lucy and how he was just abusive to her both mentally and physically, it just was making my blood boil. And when he got his demise and she was able to off him, I seriously was so happy because I was like, this guy is really, it doesn't get much worse than him. Um, just a narcissist. I don't even know if he really got remarried because that whole part was kind of murky. I don't know how you guys felt, but I know it mentioned that he had a wife, but she was busy and she was traveling. Was that all a lie? Was he just saying that to make himself look good? I don't even know if we'll ever know. Go ahead and jumping to chapter 14. I had the epiphany here, one of my predictable moments that I was talking about, where... I just had a feeling that Henry was going to be the one to poison his parents. He started talking about how he was getting into all of the um, plants and different spices and things and concoctions um, from Justin's little garden. And I just thought something is off with this little boy. He needs a lot of help. He wasn't getting any of the help. And I just had a feeling that he was going to be the one to kill his parents. And... I wasn't wrong. Um, so that piece there was a little like, mm, I didn't feel deflated that I that I was wrong, but it was easy pre to predict if that makes sense. So let's talk about the David piece a little bit. As I was listening to the story, I thought, wow, this is definitely the perfect swindling scenario. As I was getting the vibe of how David just kind of romances women like Henry's mom into just being infatuated with him. I thought to myself, I wonder how many other people um, his character would have done this to. And he kind of just swindled his whole way into their lives and really just messed it up for everybody. I really appreciated the piece when Libby goes to her new house and hears someone inside. I automatically assumed that it was Henry just stalking out the place a little bit because I felt like out of all of the characters in this story, he would have the most um, connection to the house that he, for some reason, just couldn't let go. But it was a nice twist when Lucy ended up killing Michael and she told the kids that they were going back to London because then I thought, hmm, maybe she's the one that's living in the house. Maybe it was her and the kids. And it just, I like when books make me think like that because I feel like I'm thinking one way about a book and I'm just in 
you know, invested in one character and then something like that happens and it really leaves me thinking. I am going to talk about another piece that wasn't really predictable, but I was right in my assumption on. So when Libby ends up meeting Finn, um, I remember I, was, I look at my notes when I'm filming um, these reviews and I was just reading that I had wrote when she met Finn, he had a very blank expression and then she ends up going to his apartment and everything is like neutral toned. I remember it saying like earth toned and I remember thinking like it was reading that it was really neat and I just thought that it wasn't Finn. I'm like it had to be Henry and he his obsession with Finn just made him lie and say that he's Finn because I had a feeling that he had just taken on maybe Finn's identity at some point, which obviously you guys know didn't happen, but he was so obsessed with him. I feel like obsessed is the best word to describe how Henry felt about Finn. And it ended up being Henry, like I was thinking, but I just love how Lisa Jewell put those little hints in there that if you were paying attention to what the character embodied with their characteristics and their expressions and their and their interests. I feel like you could have figured out that piece a little bit. And I'm interested if any of you guys thought the same thing when you read and or listened to that part. One of the most shocking pieces of this story for me was when we found out that Henry was very conscious of the fact that he had been drugging Finn and he was making Finn ill. That part to me just solidified the evil part of his character. While I feel that his character had a lot going on mentally and emotionally and obviously had a lot of issues, I think he did have, he had some kindness in his heart. He loved Finn. He just wanted that love back. But I think we saw the switch in his character when he was very conscious and aware that he was drugging Finn, he was making Finn ill, and all to kind of have Finn to his benefit. And that piece to me was one of the most shocking parts of the book. So in the beginning of the story, chapter one, Lucy gets that text on her phone that says, the baby turned 25. Right when I listened to that part and I met Libby, I just made the connection that that was probably her first child. I was not wrong, however, I didn't see it coming that Libby's father was Finn. I thought the entire time that something messed up was going to happen where Lucy became pregnant at a very young age, which she did, but the fact that it was Finn's baby just, I didn't, I did not see that coming. I thought that it was a little bit crazy and weird and just not not predictable that Henry and Lucy's parents went along with all of David's weird weird plans for the family. I know Henry's dad was really sick towards the end of the story and it seems like he didn't have a lot of pull in the relationship at all due to his health but it just seemed really unrealistic to me that Henry's mother would just go along with being like, yes, go ahead and impregnate my 14 year old daughter. That piece just didn't really sit well with me, honestly. I felt that while yes, in life people can become attached to others with crazy thoughts and and ideas, but this just seemed a little bit too extreme for my taste. So if I had to critique the book a little bit, I would say that that's probably the piece where I was like, mm, yes, she's really infatuated with him and she'll do anything he wants, but this is a little bit of a stretch. Another little piece of the story that I would critique is that while it was Finn's babe, Finn and Lucy's baby, I kind of was getting the vibe in the story that nobody had any privacy. Nobody ever had time alone, and I thought it a bit odd that they were able to like sneak away and do their thing, and she is a baby. 
well I felt like everyone was kind of under Birdie and David's watchful eye so that felt a little odd to me too but I mean it's a piece of the book I can get over. Lastly, I do want to talk about the ending and why I felt a little deflated. So while I liked the aspect that Henry never admitted that he bugged their phones or that he locked them in his apartment to bug their phones and he just kind of played this normal person towards the end, I liked that we found out that he tried to look like Finn, he ended up getting the lip fillers and you know, doing other sorts of things to model Finn's appearance, I was a little bit deflated um, when the ending was pretty much like, oh, do you have w one more space so I can tag along? So she could go meet, so Libby could go meet Finn. I just was kind of like, so they're going to go? And what's going to happen? Which I think is the whole point of, why Lisa Jewell wrote the ending she did. However, it just, it just didn't quite like solidify the entire puzzle for me. So all in all, I really did like this story. Was it my favorite written by Lisa Jewell? Absolutely not. Then she was gone is still my favorite. Sorry, I was like blinking on the title for a second. This was really good though. I definitely did feel like I was on the edge of my seat while reading it. I loved having those little bits of shocking information with Henry knowingly drugging Finn and Libby's father ending up being Finn. I like those parts in the story where the author just throws that in and I feel like Lisa Jewell definitely does that. With that being said, let me know what you thought of the story. Leave it in the comments below if you wouldn't mind saying spoilers in you know, spoilers in this comment or something like that for anyone else who's reading the comments that would be greatly appreciated because nobody likes a good book spoiled for them. But I definitely do want to chat with you guys about this book. I liked it a lot and I definitely will be looking for other books from Lisa Jewell. I have been reading a lot of comments on Instagram and I think there's a story called I Found You or something along those lines written by Lisa Jewell that many people say are their favorites. So if I can find something from her that is better than, than she was gone, I think I'm going to be shocked because I freaking loved that book. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!